explain a wee bit about how that's going to work, or, or uh, as much as you're prepared to tell us, please. Absolutely. Sure. We've had a uh, lease agreement with St John's for a room in their space uh, for the last five years, about five years mm. now. So um, until we effectively rent a room from them that we can run new services out of and also becomes a space for activities for young people after school. Mm. Okay, so, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any further questions, team? Can I say, and just for possibly for Councillor McCall and any new councillors that aren't familiar with Malcolm Trust, Malcolm Trust has been in our district, as you can see, for seven years, and it came about through the relationship that we developed with Malcolm Cameron, the uh, founder of Malcolm Trust. Margaret's the face that we recognise the most. She's at our uh, youth council's uh, side. She's in our high school, she's in um, basically the vulnerable areas of our communities and I just love the work that Malcolm Trust does right across not just our region but the, the whole region. So thanks team for your ongoing commitment and thank you for your presentation. Appreciate it. Okay everyone, if we could please go to our second group. Which paper am I going on? Uh, this one here. Right, it is Public Health yes. South. So Tom and Christina, welcome to the floor. Everyone, uh, page 273 on the main booklet. I'll just get to 273. That's oh, the upside down one. Welcome team, the floor is yours. Okay, um, yeah, uh, my name's Tom Scott, I'm the team leader of Pulsey at uh, Public Health South, and with me is Christine Quested. Uh, she is in our Dunedin office, officially in our Dunedin office, but uh, for more recent times is based on the room, so she's driven down from Mallory to be here today. So, yeah, uh, just to acknowledge that we see ourselves as, uh, you know, um, as bits of experts when it comes to public health. Um, and acknowledge that will be the, you know, what our submissions actually uh, represents a public health perspective, and that's as opposed to other perspectives will be coming across in, you know, in this process. And in the post-COVID world, uh, public health is also looking to maximise our effectiveness in supporting community wellbeing at all levels. We we firstly want to briefly describe the process when our submission was developed. Um, basically for engagement and conversations um, across a number of our staff and relationships at various levels with uh, the Cooper District Council as well as, um, as, 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 well as um, people within council itself. Um, we're obviously very passionate about public health and like to think of ourselves as one of the strongest allies. We believe that health begins when we live, work and play in the District Council, like other councils, as an important role to play in tracking community for the well-being of residents and visitors to South Otago. New Zealand research has shown that the strongest influences on people's health come from factors outside the health system, and it is our view that local government is a key influencer in the social, cultural, physical and economic environments in which people live. To assist us with better understanding and local application, public health units across the country are probably using the Sustainable Development Goals as a framework for engaging with councils and good health. This tool has 17 goals in poverty, tech plan, and to ensure prosperity for all as part of a new holistic sustainable development agenda. These uh, the sustainable development goals are developed by the United Nations. Each goal has a specific target to be reached over 15 years. As with health and all policies approach, for sustainable development goals to be attained and health improved for all, everyone has a part to play, including national and local governments and private sector and communities. Public Health South are keen to work with partners and develop strategies and policies to improve the health and well-being of the people district. We truly believe the SDGs are a useful approach. We also believe that we have a sound 
the reach of game fish or like the trip to get caps or some trumpet cow stuff. And today Christine is going to uh, talk a bit more about that. Thank you, Tom. And thank you for allowing me to come along and speak this morning. Um, as Tom mentioned, um, we're more proactive now than having conversations with the council. And um, so before formal consultations take place. So in the past we didn't, um, we weren't always sure of priority. But now we've got a better understanding of issues and we're able to offer more targeted advice. So uh, we also, gives us an opportunity to understand how we can work together for mutual benefit. So I just wanted to highlight today a few of the ways that we have worked together, the public health south and the council. Uh, we started holding um, network meetings, we had a meeting, a group of us from Public Health South, both Health Protection and <coughs> Promotion, had a meeting with Larissa and other policy staff and operational staff from the council. And this was really invaluable. It, it, firstly, it allowed us to meet people face to face. And when you know someone in their face, it's much easier to communicate with them. So that was really a benefit to us for our work. Um, it allowed us to share updates on the kind of work that we are doing and to identify places where we overlap and where we can support one another in our work. Um, and it also um, allowed us to discuss issues that are important that we could help one another with. So I just wanted to um, give a couple of examples of where we have identify some areas where we could engage further with council. One of them was a meeting that I personally had with council staff from planning and uh, I think it's capital delivery, I'm not sure if I've got that right, and the infrastructure teams um, and I met them along with someone from CCS Disability and we had a discussion around um, accessibility in the environment and built environment. We talked about the importance of accessibility and what happens um, when people are excluded because they can't access even the footpath in some situations. So we, I think all of us in the discussion that day had experienced something even with our own families where they hadn't um, been able to access the infrastructure. But I, so I think that that was a really beneficial conversation, but in return, uh, we heard a lot about what Council is doing to work towards making environments accessible, but also the constraints that you have, that you know, we have to work within a certain, um, certain boundaries. So it was a very beneficial meeting. And one of the things that we did talk about at that meeting was the parks tool, and I see that in the document you have today there's a copy of that parks tool. It's a really useful tool that people can use to assess the um, built environment in parks and playgrounds and in the streets. Um, it's an easy checklist that anybody can use. And I've actually brought a few copies along which I could leave up there. So if you want to take your own copy and do your own local park just to see how accessible it is, you might find that interesting to do. Um, and also that tool is very useful in actually planning when you're updating infrastructure. So for example, if you're putting a new water fountain in, it helps you understand that it's just the water fountain that needs to be accessible, it's the actual environment. And I've seen a, an example in the council, we won't talk about it, where they brought an up-to-date, fully accessible drinking fountain and they mounted it in such a way that they lost a lot of the advantages of that drinking fountain, which is really sad when you think that they went to the effort of sourcing a drinking fountain. Um, so you've got the copies of that there today, and we encourage you to use that. 
And another example is an engagement that public health staff, they supported the Clutha Youth Council with their smoke-free and vape-free community survey. And I was just talking to Jean and she said that that has been submitted and that um, there's a review to take place on that smoke-free policy. I think I have it right. So yes, we did support that. And finally, I'd like to say that these meetings and engagements have made it much easier for us just to talk to people on the phone, have conversations, bring up and discuss issues, get information so that the advice we give is, is more reasonable and targeted. So I'd just like to say thank you very much for um, allowing me, as I said, to come along. But I also wanted to say how grateful we are to the council staff for their willingness to engage with us and to discuss issues. We're very, um, very happy about that. Thank you very much. And now I'll hand it back to Tom. I'm repeat some of what uh, Christine just said, <laughs> but uh, finally, we just need to acknowledge the role that you play in the Council. We value the existing relationship with Council staff. Already, public health and your staff are making conscious efforts provide an environment to encourage upstream input and consultation, minimises the need and to get into the formal process, with the exception of actually backing some of that uh, upstream work up. Um, this is why today we choose to focus on how we're working together to grow stronger, mutually respectful relationship between our two organisations. The issues capturing our submission are not the problem, and we'll continue to work alongside you and the council staff. Kula, Tom and Christina. Um, questions, councillors? Councillor Vowela. Thank you, Peter. Um, <coughs> uh, just um, in your submission, you mentioned community gardens and you've got the president's growers skills from the first employment. Further questions, team? I do have one, and, uh, not so much a question, but I want to thank you for bringing to my attention because in previous Main Street upgrades, we have had a focus for accessibility and the needs for people with access issues, and yet now as we roll into the Milton upgrade, I don't know whether we have we got those same processes in place. We have, Jules. We, we did for the, the Clutha one. We'll do the same. Thing. We'll do the same for Milton. I just haven't seen it triggered. So thank you for bringing that to our attention. Anything else, councillors? Um, Justine, are you able to liaise with Christine just to get the because you've got information? So if you could please leave that information with Justine, and she will get it out to us at lunchtime. And thank you for travelling so far to come and assist us. And a real comprehensive, and we always appreciate your input. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Right, next up matter. As I was wandering down the street, or more the point, waddling down the street of Milton one day a few months ago, a young primary school lady went past me with a box of, of uh, food. And my social radar isn't quite as astute as it should be. But the Project Bruce team recognised that when a young kid comes in and the first thing they think of when they finish school for the day is that they've got to go on the hunt for food, it was sending warning bells for the team to whip on in, follow that girl home and find out what changes are happening to cause those dynamics. Do we love Project Bruce? Too right we do. 
should be a standing ovation we give our team. So you will have seen that you've got Kim there, but we've also got Catherine. So welcome to Catherine Paul, for those that don't know, and Kim Schiller. The floor's yours, team. Oh, hold on, and page 253. And first of all, we'd really like to acknowledge and say thank you for that wonderful decision last year to um, fund us $60,000 towards our operational cost, which is just, you know, was, was incredible for us. It allows us so much more freedom to do what we do. Um, so we're in our fifth year now, and uh, in, the, oh, in our second year is being an independent charitable trust, which is going really well. Um, and the money from last year and our other funding that we were able to secure has meant that we were able to continue with another year of, of um, feeding our kids, which is all about our program to collaborate with their favourite kitchen facility for lunches to uh, about 20% of the school children that needed it in, in Milton and um, the area. And so that literally just finished on Monday. The government scheme healthy lunches has rolled out in Milton now. So uh, we're continue, going to continue our collaboration with the Tago facilities, uh, Christian facilities, and hopefully bring meals to the community to work. So we're working on that at the moment. Um, we also, with our collaboration with through Kiwi Harvest, through the lunches and also distributing food to the hub, we've managed to move. Uh, we distribute about 10 tonnes of food um, by the end of last year. So that's pretty exciting. And, and all of this is in detail, but we're really excited about the stuff we're doing, so we'll just run over a few of these briefly. Um, we also managed with funding from Creative Communities for two more pretty glossy editions of our heteroglossia art publication to town, which was an opportunity for people to showcase their artistic talent and photography. Um, and we're working with some involvement with the Civil Defence Emergency Management and the and involvement in the Swimming Pool Library Service Centre project as well. Uh, we were able to bring ninja training by spinning workshops back to our young people again last year. And we also did a wonderful collaboration with the Otago Polytech Occupational Therapy students. They, we had three sets of students and they did wonderful projects. Uh, we were intended to hold a second free day but the COVID alert level didn't allow but they've left us a beautiful manual for going forward to do that. Um, also a cookbook that was a collaboration of local recipes from local people and really simple um, affordable recipes so that people were able to, um, you know, some some of the people that we see that come through the hub and um, access Project Bruce uh, don't have a lot of skills and so it was a really incredible cookbook that the team put together. And a whole bunch of DIY videos that are online, changing the washer, changing the tyre, things that people can do at home for themselves as well. Um, also the Bruce Community Shed up behind the showgrounds in association with the um, South Otago Security Society is coming in leaps and bounds. We've got a Beautiful workshop in there now, lots of donated tools and we're working on getting some funding for machinery. There's a tea room, we've got electricity and there's an amazing bunch of mostly retired tradies um, who spend every Thursday morning up here um, working on community projects. So Catherine's going to talk a little bit about her sustainability as well. Greener side of step. Um, so post lockdown we sort of noticed a need for food security in our community so we've been working really really hard in the community garden since lockdown and um, we've added new garden beds and orchard and the food is being distributed through into the community through the Tokomarero community hub and um, we've also still continuing our potato project where we plant a ton of seed potatoes a year and work with South Otago Heritage Society the Vintage Machinery Club, Community Garden and Tukumairiro High School to harvest them and yeah, redistribute them through the community again. So they're going to Waihol, the Tidy Mount and Milton. <coughs> and actually some of them went right through to what's the other south of Milton as well. Um, we're working with the Motorata Tidy Fano on a trapping project. So they've got trap lines running through Ellison's Bush Conservation Area, Tairi River Center Preserve. And um, so they're trapping rats, possums, and stoats and monitoring the progress. That's in collaboration with DOT. We've got them with some funding, and Kim and I actually went and did some monitoring with them, which is quite fun. Um, we've done a tree project at Southbridge with Milton Area Promotions and Rotary, and that was kind of a bit of a beautification project because that's where you first come into Milton, that's kind of what you see from the south, but it was also a soil restora restoration project. and. Uh, Stopping the erosion into the water, so a bit of a purification project. 
Um, we've been working with ECA, Warman, Kiwi Homes Association, so that's kind of around informing the community members on the funding they're available for the own home installation and the deprivation numbers and um, putting them in touch with the right people and just letting people know what the regulations are around installation because it needs to be done for now, it's illegal to not have it. So, um, yes, and sustainability workshops. So we've done a bunch of uh, like waste minimisation information workshops where we kind of break them down into smaller things. Mm. So making for easy to work, crochet, upholstery, kind of, yeah, refurbishing old things rather than buying new things. Um, we have a stall in our workspace where we sell uh, like waste minimisation and sustainable products at cost, so not for profit, just with the aim of getting information about these products out to the community why we need to use them. And in conjunction with that, we are running a TerraCycle product stewardship initiative where we can collect different items back for recycling. They seem to be made into new things rather than going into landfills, so it's like pens and red tags for wheelchairs and a bunch of different things you can bring that into the hub. And I think that's me. Yeah, did it go on too long? No, no, that's great. <laughs> um, so also we get to, as part of our day, support local initiatives. So we've um, been able to support Blessed Box, Southern Recycling, the Dead Cafe, um, Southern Dance Academy, a wonderful woman, Nicola, who's come through from Balcotha and is now running dance lessons for young people in Milton, um, which is great. And we've been part of, we're part of the double um, crew in St John uh, during that, that period when it was a little bit undecided. Um, we help facilitate the petition for St John as well. Uh, we also facilitate seminars quite quite consistently. Yesterday we had one of one from the Brain Injury Association down at the hub, um, and the Otago Corrections Community Work have connected, come and connected with our community as well, so we can help um, facilitate the community workers to do projects around town too. Um, and also on and with the onslaught of online. Banking and technology, um, which is obviously quite a big deal at the moment. We have a drop in, so we used to have Mondays, but now it's kind of just any time during the week anybody's got a problem with internet banking or any, any online situation, they can pop in and see us and we'll do our best to give them a hand as well at any time. So that's kind of what we're up to. Coming up in the pipeline for this year, um, we'd like to grow and evolve our relationship with Kiwi Harvest because it's Again, addressing that growing need for food security, the word for 2020, <laughs> um, in the community, and um, it's also diverting a huge amount of uh, organic waste from the landfill by strengthening that relationship. Um, we would like to facilitate more public arts that um, kind of reflect the vibrancy and the identity of the community. It's a little bit plain at the moment, and people aren't playing, the people are awesome. So, um, We've got an upcoming street art workshop at the high school, so that's with a Dunedin artist coming in and facilitating some workshops for some youth at the school. Thanks for your community for that one. Um, and we would like to just continue to support emerging educational programs through the schools and um, students in the community, and such as the Future Focus Learning Project. Yeah. Oh, so we're still going. Um, yeah, we're going to continue strategizing with Milton Kindergarten, so they've come to us and they want to um, sort of figure out a way to engage more with the families and the community and create a common goal for the future of the Tamariki in Milton and working towards community building events. So we want to do some fun inter-community events between um, Milton Waihola and Taiyari Mouth, so get people kind of interacting who wouldn't normally <coughs> interact with each other and um, some community celebrations, some music, foods, and, yeah, kind of um, bring all the cultures together. We've got a lot of, um, kind of yeah, an increasing immigrant <coughs> population in, well, Milton particularly, and we'd like to kind of celebrate that. Yeah. yeah. And um, part of that as well, well, part of all of that is building a really good collaborative um, community group network. So we've got all these amazing organisations across the Bruce District and we'd like to find a way to bring them together so they can communicate what their needs are, what resources, resources they've got and how to share that effectively so we can all work towards a um, shared vision for our district. And um, so to get a feel for that we, put, we did a survey over March and April to find out how we were tracking what people were thinking of Project Bruce and are we, you know, are we, are we useful, do we have value? So we had 100 and, uh, about 140 um, respondents to our survey and 99.2% uh, of them <laughs> were aware of um, our 
some of all of our projects and 100% of them to continue. Um, so we really hope that the larger community consultation reflected that as well. We've had our fingers crossed that people are still keen for us to carry on. Um, so essentially our job is to connect people with opportunities and to build and increase local connections and resilience and make our community a place that people want to live in. Um, positive social change happens when communities are supported to identify their own needs and build their own solutions to that, and that's what community-led development aims to do. It's a vehicle for positive, well-rounded systemic change. And COVID-19 demonstrated so clearly to us that there's a massive need for networks to be supported that bring people together. Um, and we, so, but we believe that um, you know, community structure is essential not just in times of crisis, but also in times of calm as well. We're really good at getting together in a crisis, but we can continue that all the time, and that's the goal. Um, and we feel like the community development is a really good way to address many of the aspects of the four well-beings. So, <laughs> we invite Council again to um, invest strategically in community building for the long term um, by committing $60,000 again um, per year for the next three years um, to ensure the longevity of project risk and stable funding always puts us in a better position to be able to um, respond to the needs of the community. So money is essentially for core funding, operations, communication and overheads and in essence it's just alleviating the need for us to keep on hunting for um, grants all the time so that we can actually get on and do the work. So yeah, thanks again for listening to us. Thanks so much for your support. It's been brilliant over the last few years and we just love the relationship. So Thanks. Killer team. Questions, councillors? Councillor Herbert, followed by Finch. Thank followed you. Followed by... Along here again. My question's really regarding uh, page 263 with your, your sort of um, income and expenditure there. Yeah. And all these things need to be paid for. Yeah. Um, and, and roughly we're, we're financing just a little more than 50%. The rest of it comes through a series of grants and applications. Yes. If, you know, two or three or a few of those fail, which are significant, yeah. what's plan B? Um, well, we're currently working with the Department of Internal Affairs and we've got all our fingers crossed and we'd like to try and enter into the uh, Community Lead Development Partnership, which is, is and, 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 uh, essentially the jackpot of funding. Um, and that's a five-year program where they co would co-fund the rest of our costs. And I think at the moment we're sitting with nine, be nine applicants in this four position. So we've got our, we're, we're really hoping that comes through. But otherwise it's just going back to the back to the hunt for, and, and the hunt for more funders that are prepared to fund costs, really. But a lot of, the, you know, a lot of that too, we've, we've got project money is in the budget. The council money, to be fair, will cover a good percentage of our operations, and then the project money really, we, you know, we can do projects for nothing, it's just a lot harder. So that's where we're at. Councillor Finch, followed by Foster. Thank you for your submission, really well done again, and thank you for what you're doing for the community, it is really, really good. And I was outside one day and saw a young girl walking out with a box of food and got chatting to her, and I'm really aware of what is happening. Um, are you aware that now the funding would come from the Bruce District, don't you? Yes, 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 we are. Yeah, yeah. we talked about that last year. And um, so that's why we've got, we really hope everybody that has submitted to the long term plan is keen for us to stick around. So, great. Thank you. Sorry, Councillor Foster. Oh, thank Sorry. You. And well done, I mean, what an impressive list that you gave us there. Um, but my question was, are you finding that there are people coming from outside the Bruce District to try and get help with food or, or wanting to join the workshop? So yes. Is it, is it just within yeah. Bruce? Or no, it's outside. Yeah. 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 yeah, we have got, we have, yeah, absolutely we have. And because we work with Anna from the hub as well, and she feeds things out to Lawrence and Wadahuna, and, and we have lots of people come from Klutha for workshops, in, in the Perth district as well, and Awaka and places too. So yes, it's, it's we're kind of building a rich. So is that more? Mm -hmm. Sorry, is that more the workshops, or is that more um, like food and you know that sort of? Probably real, more the workshops. Yeah, something. So the food security stuff is probably more contained within the Bruce district. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Wilkinson. 
Um, <coughs> once I to your question, it's just, I just wanted to thank, um, thank you guys for your um, submission and the tremendous work the ladies do um, for our community. It's um, truly amazing and <coughs> best wishes. Thank, thank you. you. We do love it. Anyone further? Yes. Oh, oh sorry, Councillor Kelly. Uh, thank you. Um, mine's probably simple. I probably think, like I enjoyed your submission. Thanks for providing so much detail. Um, you started off about um, the lunches that get taken to schools. Um, who decides who gets what? Uh, well, our our feeding our kids um, program, we base our numbers on twenty percent deprivation you know, children in poverty, and we then we worked with each of the individual schools to see, we, we just were really flexible about what numbers they needed, so we started off with, like, with 20% and then we said, well, have you got an article, not an article, and the prison was amazing, they, they came to the party and could change numbers, so that we, we were catering to the children that needed, definitely needed a whole lunch for themselves, and then anything that was over and above that got shared out among the other children if there was stuff left over, to try and create a culture of it being okay to be accepting food. <coughs> so, so it'd be like the principal of the school would make yeah, those so decisions? Yeah, so actually just do communication with teachers. That's teachers right. know who, yeah. who's going to need it. I think that, but anyway, thanks for your explanation. No Further questions, councillors? If there are none, and, and I yeah. note your modesty in the fact that you didn't say as one of your huge workload is that they now have to look after Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> That's a job in itself. <laughs> I, no, jokes aside, team, thank you for your presentation. Really appreciate the work that you do. Thank you. Kia ora. We're going to pop out to go to Susie Agnes' funeral, so we're going to stick out. By all means, yes, definitely. Thank you very much. So, our next presenters, welcome Lisa and Diane. So, Lisa and Diane from Catlin's Coast. We come bearing gifts, yeah. thank you. <laughs> We're always promoting, regardless. <laughs> That's the whole idea. Okay. Thank you. Want one? I know, thanks. Oh, where's the camera? Just, just. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're sitting beside that, really. I'm 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 sitting beside that, He's and as the Captain's Coast Project Coordinator, thank you for this opportunity yeah. to speak and support our submission. <laughs> also here today is Captain's Coast Chair Dyke like Dinner, who's just coming down to some of our resources that we've been speaking to um, today. As you'll note from our submission, the Captain's Coast operates using the Captain's Community Tourism Strategy 2016 to 2026, from which an implementation plan was derived. To help deliver some of the identified projects in this strategy, we have endeavoured to work alongside and in partnership with a number of organisations, um, with local community, community groups, businesses, EWI and relevant government organisations, and that's also with the District Council as well as South Wales District Council. The Catlins Coast is unique in that it covers both the South and the Cooper District and the Catlins. Some of our focus, just to give you a bit of an idea, is um, our aims and objectives is to protect the Catlins' natural environment and cultural resources. It also um, enhances education in terms of those who visit it, and also uh, we're responsible really for promoting the care code. Some of this is achieved through various means, such as our interpretation panels, such as uh, our seed throughout the Catlins. And our resources, which includes the care code, visitor guide, which is also referred to as a purple brochure, and the A3 tear-off map. So in front of you, you'll have the um, tear-off map, you'll have the um, guide there, the virtual guide, and as part of those, you'll see the care code that's actually incorporated into those resources as well. The resources are standalone resources and are addressed as such in terms of their development, review and funding for each. Although to note, given the importance of the care code and the message it conveys, uh, it's incorporated onto the tariff map, which you'll see on the back there, um, which is also included in the brochure as a flat feature. So if you have that new brochure there, if you go to the back, you'll see that that actually pulls out, which is our map and our care code at the back. The Coonda District Council kindly approved a grant towards the care code from the last 2018 to 2021 long-term plan. The council also approved a grant towards the tear-off map from the last 2020 <coughs> annual plan, which we absolutely so very much appreciate, so thank you very much for that. 
In regard to the 2021 to 2031 long term plan, um, planning ahead for us, um, we're sort of now looking for some financial support to use those resources, which is a tail of Matt Brosh, your care code and website. Just to tell you a little bit about the resources, the Care Code is of great importance in providing educational information to visitors on how they should respect and care for the captains during their trip, which includes how to protect our precious fauna and um, flora. The tear-off map is widely utilised throughout the captains by visitors, local community and businesses, and also in times of emergencies, as it was prone to be valuable during passengers. Um, such as the following of the Catlins in February 2020, just to name one. The map is also available for use for the Kruger District Council Freedom Camping Ranger, a role which is considered of importance in the Catlins and should be continued, we believe. The website is a great forum for the community to share information and for visitors to access information in preparation for their visit to the Catlins. This information includes the care of the Catlins, what to see and do and where to stay. Given both the map and care code are also part of that purple brochure that you have in front of you, this is yet another resource that we use and that provides educational information to the visitor on their trip to the Catlins. All the resources are reviewed on an annual basis, which includes a consultation program, sorry, process involving the local community. The resources can all be accessed on the website, but given, but given Wi-Fi is not always accessible in the Catlins, it's important to have five copies, which is what you have in front of you, of these resources, which are widely distributed throughout the Catlins via, via various means. As part of the annual review of the website, the process identifies where further website enhancements could be made, which work towards continuing to improve its usage. Advertising in the resources generates some funding towards the cost of the continued development and printing of the resources. Given COVID-19, we believe we must continue to generate these resources for the benefit of the capitalist community, wildlife and environment. Unfortunately, as a result of the COVID, though, the business income is anticipated to be negatively impacted as we move forward, thus the current financial support from advertisers is proving to be less than in previous years. <coughs> so Catlin Coates would very much appreciate if the council would consider giving some financial support towards the care code, the tariff map of the brochure on the website, which would go towards some of the costs highlighted in the budget provided as part of our submission. A hard copy of the resources will also assist in setting up for the next winter season. But thanks for your time and we're happy to take any questions. Thank you for that, Team Councillor Sutherland. Uh, Philip Lisa, <coughs> the Mets have been great. The cell phone does help with all the costs? Well, funny you should say, um, we've actually put in um, a submission to South and District Council as part of their long term plan, so yes, we have been and have asked for some um, financial support in terms of funding towards the map. The map actually is used, they, they have what, um, it's called a, a, a responsible camping ambassador and they actually use those maps that we feel it's fair that they do some contribution towards that. We've yet to have the outcomes on that though. Yeah, as part of the Freedom Camping Adventure, they had funding for Lindley, and they've actually helped to finance a whole lot of panel journey, so we were requesting the kiosk at Sterling Hill which I would support our industry, so that has the key code and map on it. Um, so we were in the process of replacing it. PCC has picked up the account on that, plus they used foot panels at the Port Rose Foreshore, uh, Slope Point, one at Niagara Hall as well. So they put a message out there in the South industry <coughs> using our resources. So um, that's taken a huge financial burden off us because those panels it's gone above and beyond what we require, but some others would need a replacement as well. So, yeah, thank you. Council Pine. Oh, thank you, Your Worship. I just, could I just, uh, just ask for a little more context around the submission to the South and District Council. The, 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 the amount, is it for the $3,000 or is it, is it a proportion of that or what is it? Uh, we've asked for $2,000. $2,000. Thank you. Do they have a community initiative fund which we also apply to for other things as well? So, yeah. Um, yeah. Some panels, set of panels, yeah. yeah. We can apply to all of these through that fund which um, this is probably our only ability to do that. And just, just to move on that a little bit further, the reason we asked um, 
2,000 rather than the three, so because as Diane indicated, they have to give us the support in terms of the panels that, that um, Diane has identified, so they've already contributed to the support. That's obviously an important point in their decision making. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So so yeah. I think that was a point you made. You're fine. Sorry about that. It was that long ago you put your hand up. You've forgotten. My apologies, Gamer. So it's going to be Councillor Herbert followed by Foster. Just a quick question. Thanks. Thanks for coming along. Um, the maps are obviously really important. And by your cheap one there, you're talking about using 800 pads a year. How many maps in each pad? So that's 80,000 maps. You'll go for 80,000 maps in one year. Four on no COVID at the moment. Um, we have like fifty of cocoa tree a day. They're mm -hmm. using one a day, I think a couple of days in the height of these seasons. So the um, eyesight at the information centre, the Walker and Cooper, and the numbers that they go through is the more the museum. So we've got them distributed, distributed in various locations, and also in the Eden um, for people that are coming down into the Catlins. Yeah. So they met going sort of around the north and south, Riverton, Piano, Queenstown. The need and sort of that closer yeah, because all the distribution for the maps is done by volunteers. The brochure, on the other hand, is distributed mostly through Market South. So at this point, Great South actually picks up the point for that fee of the distribution cost, which is reasonably significant. So um, that will go further. So that will go as far as Auckland with some of the auction information centers <coughs> So that's why also we charge more for advertisers in the brochure because they are getting that wide spread of uh, information. Councillor Foster. Thank you. Um, my question, uh, two questions. Uh, one was around the 30,000 for the brochure, uh, the 30,000 a month brochure. Is that for a year's worth of advice? Yes. Okay. Um, and have you applied or are you planning to apply to a target community trust or that sort of. Um, yeah, we use the funding bot. All the other funding bodies there as well. We do that as part of the interpretation plans, etc. And depending on what the outcome is, we start and run all the year in terms of the council. We can also be going to start a project with the trust or something like that. But when we have those set up for other projects we have in hand, which are probably not stuck again, such as the other in terms of uh, the face of the joint sale interpretation plan and so forth. So, no, not, not only do we just produce new panels, we actually have to be thanked the existing ones as well. The look the matter of the brochure also looks done. It's, it's essentially self-funded, but obviously in the COVID environment that we have, the emergency is a temporary shutdown, so we need to look for our sources. But essentially, if we don't get the money, we have to put these. If we put these, then we obviously can't get the message out as far as why we want the 800 pegs to be in the purpose. And there are a lot of variables here, so it is very much work on budget as to what we can do. Again, we have advertisers in the brochure, the brochure is thinner. So it's, we don't really want to run a loss on that, so the more income, the more brochures, the more maps we can produce, the bigger, further wider we can get the message out. Councillor Cowie, followed by Ludeman. Uh, thank you. Um, and your, your map's a good initiative. Um, I, I collected one from Whistling Frog uh, earlier on this year. And, uh, Someone else took it away, so it's a good idea. My question is, uh, how many people are in your uh, organisation? So, so we, we've got, um, we have 10 as part of the committee, but, uh, um, as part of the people that are on the actual captain's post, but in, in terms of the executive committee, we've got seven. That's good. Thank you. Do you have a good job? We work very, very closely with the other community organisations in the area. That's the South Catalyst Promotion, Catalyst Promotion, and we have a lot of going forward, so we do with the network with as many groups as we can so that we have the voice of the Catalans is represented when we put them in school. So even though they may not come to the meetings, we do get a lot of feedback from them and support. And we do well. Thank you. Councillor Lederman. Oh, thank you for your submission. Um, do you work in conjunction with Luther Development for producing? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, we you do. do. So, so, so financial support from them? Um, well, not towards the resources, but we are, for example, um, doing looking at doing a welcome to the captain side and further development of kind of um, giving $2,000 towards that. So yes. Yeah. And they're so also helping us with the review of our current strategy as well. So they are actually financially supporting and, and doing good great sound, which they also work for. Um, so yes, 
So yes, we do. So when I um, indicate in terms of working with other organisations, that is Southern District Council, Cooper Development, Cooper District Council, and the local organisations, as what Diane mentioned, I will have to go for Platinum's promotion in South Platinum. So yes, we and dock and even and so forth. So, so I mean, it's really good we've got a budget. It would be probably quite good to have um, a copy of your financials. Quite to sure, actually, yeah, and that lets us get an overview of where your funding does come from. Um, yeah, just to give a good overview, I, I think that would perhaps be helpful for us to make a decision if that was Yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank okay. you. All the funding for the grocery, you may think for medical problems, but these are very good to do for it. Um, our main funding for our public coordinator is robberies, and we do comments, and we've not quite got to see who are making it, but it could be an option. And we don't have to have a relationship with the people developing as well. Um, the strategy, our research is not actually due to be reviewed for a few more years, but the whole stuff is that they have, uh, two for both have got the destination strategies and involved McIntyre has worked on both of those and working with them closely with them. Um, it was sort of recognised that there's just a lot of what is in those strategies and that's been pretty well based on what we've got already, we were there first, so. Um, but we have a few things there that probably need to be fixed and then we can all be on the same page. Just to say we all need yeah. to be working together. Which is what we and, do. And, yeah. It's part of the consultation, that's exactly what we do. One yeah. doesn't go without the other. Yeah. We're very transparent in terms of what we're trying to achieve. And we have meetings, we have Zoom meetings. And there was also, um, it's been set up with the Great Stars, it's called the Partnership Meeting. And Cooper Development is part of that as well. So absolutely transparent. And the transparency is imperative, and that's what we do there. Yeah. For the protection yeah. and the community wellbeing, um, everybody has to be on the same page. The out area that we have good outcomes, if we're all pulling in different directions, it's just going to fall the place to pieces, and that's the yeah. council that has that. So we're very open to any groups that want to come in and sit the table and talk to us about what we're hoping to achieve and protect. So it's very open um, organisation. Councillor McCall. Uh, you know, well, uh, thank you very much for coming in and telling us about the story. I've just got a quick question around the Freedom Camping Ranger. It sort of interests me because it's in the sustainability here. So you've got funding from the government just now for that. I was wondering what funding that is, how long it lasts, because without that funding, it creates quite a contingency, I'd imagine. So coming in 50,000 that they've reached the food and resources. So part of that, and in the age range, I believe, so um, they were going to do it on that, but then when they looked at ours, and they were a couple of things that we were tweaked, so the area has to have been really worked out, and then they said the common thing, so they put all the um, one of the food prices over my future. But um, yeah, so, so we helped them spend the money on that. Is there an actual camp, uh, ranger on the tree? Yes, so they, they, call, they refer to the ambassador, the Camping Ambassador, that's what they find in their Instagram. So oh, yeah, and if it goes up, they go up, and I, I believe the, the, the current Cooper District Council Ranger, they, they have been um, meeting and discussing, I believe, as well. But yeah, they go for things as far as having a wide, even though that's in Cooper District, they really just can you know, cross over. I think it's part of the job. We would be at the that was going to come on the road as far as the page, so yeah. Anything else, team? If not, could you please pass on to your team the district's appreciation? This has been a year you know, like no other, we hope, and you haven't missed a beat in representing your community. So thank you. Brilliant thank you. job. Thank and thank you for your comprehensive presentation. Thank you for that. Thank Cheers. Tell her. Can I just quickly add as well, even though it's been a COVID year, we did get some enterprises come off because we should put on that on the accelerator and keep people in the business you see what I've seen through my own business because people are going out of the main areas. So. That's the feedback we've been getting, that things have really held together down there. So well done. Brilliant. Okay, our next one's up. I saw Rod. Yes, I did see Rod. So we've got the team from the combined museums. I'm not sure it's Peter, Rod, and we did have Nolene. Was oh well, no, we've got two. Welcome, team. Floor is yours. Good afternoon, people. Peter Rod, chief big farmer, 
I'll name a few words, so it will be short for this afternoon. I do talk myself and swear the dog, so but really we're here to uh, ask for your um, support for our six museums in the Kuka district, uh, for our main essentials of uh, rates, insurance and electricity. So uh, you have agreed uh, there's a mate, and I don't think it's really much that I can do to it. It's close and that's not. Concise and to the point. I love it. Yeah. Questions, Tane? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Councillor Bowella. Well. Thank you. Um, thanks very much for the question. I know you've asked for 58 minutes. No, I think it's just a matter of time. Not at this stage, no. Um, but because we do end up with a little bit of a surplus, but um, you know, that accumulates and is used <coughs> amongst those six museums for the team for um, different projects, and that can be things like deferred maintenance to their buildings or. Um, improving their storage and conservation facilities, so it's important for the whole community. And those sorts of things. Yeah, so this is a little, little bit that we can do that. So generally, we pretty much <coughs> within that figure. I congratulate you on making it a little bit more of a Well, I think the small, the small museums, we, we run on this now of an oily bag, so we're probably um, used to them. Councillor Foster followed by Sutherland. Thank you. And one of the questions, just following on from the way that we've been talking about the number of 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 because our volunteers are all in the over 70 age range in that, in that COVID vulnerable group and our museum in particular um, is a very cold building so you know, we kind of felt that it would be good for our volunteers to be, to be there not only for the risk of COVID but because of the condition of the So yes. the thing, Elizabeth numbers have been um, variable. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have, in a week, we will have four or three four days with no visitors and a couple of days of two, four, six. We're very excited when we get six in a day. <laughs> so <laughs> will there be more of an information to us here and will be busier or not? We would, we would hope so, but yeah, it right. seems to be the domestic tourism has dropped. Uh, that, but um, our people seem to be a three-way through to everybody talks about going to our office and going to Scotland. Yes, comparing with six museums, if you're on the tourist route, you certainly have more uh, visitors than what we do in Western Park anyway, mm -hmm. so we really get the state highway to go right past that museum. Cancel Sutherland. <laughs> If there's no further questions, then can I firstly thank you on behalf of the council for that prudence, fiscal prudence that you display. It's testament to you that you know, it means a lot to me, actually. Thank you. And thank you for your presentation and thanks for the great work that you do. Kill them. Right. We've got Robert and Hans from West Otago Community Centre. Thank you for your patience, gentlemen. Welcome. Now, our team, we're on page 344 of the main book. Look. Floor's yours, guys. Um, quick rundown, West Otago Community Centre, built in 1994, 1990, and um, is run by 
the Wistatoa community, there's about four elected members and the rest are from organisations such as indoor tennis, theatrical, any, any business or club that uses it, they want to have a representative and admit. So I'm the chairman and just taken it over recently, so I'm learning. I've been on the committee for a long time, but the man who knows just about everything about our board is hand, as our treasurer, and uh, he's going to put out a presentation for you. Right, so thank you for giving us the opportunity to speak for today. Um, the purpose of our submission to the CDC is to give you plan is to raise awareness of our potential funding concerns for the Chicago community. As our committee proceeds to tackle a major workload as identified in our recently prepared to the plan that hopefully you've a copy of. Now the West Otago Community Centre is an integral part of the wider West Otago community and it's not only the venue for a wide range of sporting, theatrical and social activity, but it's also the Tasmanian and surrounding area of civil community centre and serves as a backup the West Otago Health Medical and Age Care Facility. It was completed in 1990 at a cost of $1.3 million. The complex now represents has a replacement insurance value of $6.3 million. Over the past 15 years, that insurance costs have escalated from $7,500 a year to $20,000 a year. This increase has been almost equivalent to our total amount we received from the CDC in terms of our annual grant to the provider's household community improvement rates. Uh, over time, higher incomes have been losing with static over the years, with only minor increases over time. Our committee will need to be more attentive to reviewing high rates in the future to reflect current operating costs. We do, however, need to be mindful of pushback from users that have demonstrated already by significant resistance from Theatre for theatre hires from the other town people who are users. There seems to be a trend now where they'd rather go to the hall or still off and up and sort of pay $150 to use a theatre. We have a concern in the public sort of facility in the area. Um, our committee remains very appreciative of the financial support we receive from the work of our community board. Their annual grant of $15,000 represents the of their annual income. Over the past 30 years, our committee has managed the facility very frugally, allowing some $260,000 to be accumulated and reserved after a provision of $50,000 for working capital. This amount includes a recent $50,000 donation from the member of our community, plus we heard the odd windfall on the way. Capital expenditure on plant and equipment in the complex has in the main been funded by donation and fundraising from new groups. For example, our theatre has a very comprehensive lighting and sound industry managed by the Theatrical Society. LED lighting in the main hall is organised by the Theatre's Club. New Higgins and Squash Court organised by the squash, but etc. Funding assistance for these projects uh, you generally see from the Trust Community Foundation, the Community Trust of Southland, the local lines are also very really supportive. Our committee has prepared a 10 year maintenance program, with particular concern being the replacement of both the leaking tray roofing and deteriorating butanol used in the complex. A strict director of one of our traditional productions will choreograph in wiping the water off the floor with a bucket and mop as part of the production in case of raining on any particular night. Um, of the million dollar program identified, nearly three quarters is the re-roofing and theatre re-strengthening. Linked with this, and a very high priority, is the replacement of the complete overhead theatre system of the structure the existing network of temporary scaffold and timber being pretty number eight, what I'm not compliant. We have plans and quotations to hand for stage one, the theatre roof and overhead infrastructure project to be carried out in the summer of 21 24. This will be subject to favourable consideration for funding assistance from the Lotteries Commission and the Trust Community Foundation. Should funding be declined or be significantly less than requested, we will need to go back to the Lord, during the work. Our submission to you is for an increase to the household living. We currently stand at $20 per household per year, which is set, I think, 
in the building is open in 1990. A doubling of this to say $40 for example would increase our income by 30 or 40 billion dollars. This seems to us to be the fairest way to distribute the cost of maintaining our facility across as wide a proportion of its community as possible. This increase will not address the long-term maintenance problem, but at least our revenue streams would be improved from the break-even operating budgets currently being forecast. We can then move forward with a degree of confidence and use our total existing cash reserve as traction in applying for further funding from the region's charitable organisations. Perhaps a local fundraising committee may need to be put in place, but we are mindful that the locals have gone and potentially West Cape Health are also seeking local donation. A replacement group from the community centre may just not be very sexy in comparison. We thank you for your time and for your consideration. Thank you, gentlemen. Questions, councillors? Oh, sorry, Councillor Cowie. Uh, Thanks, guys, for coming along. Uh, just a question. Um, off the top of your head, can you tell me what your rates, insurance, and electricity bill would be in total? Please. Uh, insurance is about 20. It's going to take a bit of Oh, there's an extra bit. <coughs> extra bit. <coughs> Sorry, is it? Yeah, Carol, no. I've asked uh, the question. What's the insurance? Uh, the rates, are, I think they're about 500 bucks from memory. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the third one? Uh, Christy, see one, I think. Was it better? Well, good news. I say 30k would be. 30k. And you get 15k from the council currently. Uh, approximately. Another question uh, to do with uh, health and safety. How compliant is the visual call currently? Then. Oh, sorry. With health, regards to health and safety, how compliant would your community centre be? And, well, the only issue we've got is, is inside the theatre, which is the, the infrastructure placed in there by primarily funded by the Church of the Society. So when that was first installed in 1990, it tended to be 8-2, the whole tabs, the whole uh, scaffold pipe, all scaffold together. It's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. But the problem is, while that scaffold pipe is acceptable for a temporary installation, it's not for a permanent one. Yeah. So, you know, we've had the, the we, are, we are getting to the point now where because all that stuff is over here, it's, it would be a bloody nightmare if something that did come down and land on somebody, and then it might only be a life, but the mere fact that you've triggered that safety order, if you like, the, the, I imagine ultimately the, the management to me is going to be right to go. So, I mean, it's also included with the fact that you know, now for our lighting bar, you need to get bars that winch down and come down the ground level, we're not going to go up a bloody ladder. And it just, it just a bit ridiculous, but it all adds, you know, adds to the cost. So yeah. just to replace the steel work, I think, within 55, 50 years of that. To answer your question, the problem, I'm very fat and grim. <laughs> well, I sort of figure then, to yeah, me, that, that adds strength to your case, we, as far as I'm concerned. We, we, we tend to be very, I mean, I'm part of the threat to the society, I'm the one that's swinging around up here. Um, we, we tend to be over-cautious, but we have potential already had one incident during rehearsal which could have made sure something. So, you know, we're... Good. Appreciate your honesty. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Councillor Herbert, followed by Ludeman and Payne. Thanks, guys, for coming along, and, and uh, really enjoyed your presentation. Can you just help the members understand about how important it is to the community as far as the usage goes with the squash and the theatre and the tennis and all those things? <coughs> Have you got any idea of nights or days it's used a week that can help people understand just how important this sort is? In wintertime, this time of year, it would be every night. If you go in there now, you've got the squash courts going, you've got these guys playing tennis, we've got the threat for rehearsing, dance classes, uh, Zumba and Roomba and all sorts of things. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you find just that even space will be you will be here. Thank you. Um, plus it's awful critical for those big gatherings like Anzac Circus, the funerals, you know, that's the big thing that's all today. Councillor Ludeman followed by Pat. Thank you um, for your submission and you have got a wonderful 
facility down there. I agree with that. And we were looking at their building air hub here. We um, likened this to Targo that we need it. Um, so I know you've got a great facility. A couple of things. That, the, what we give you now on, on the household levy, is that rated against the West Otago Ward? Yes. So, so if it was increased to the 40, that will be rated against the West Otago Ward, I imagine. So that's one thing. Commonage funding. Do you get some, some yes, funding from the Commonage? That's a community balance on the uh, 15,000 from the community. That, oh, that, that's the money from the community yeah. board. Yeah. Okay. Um, and any other funding from the West Otago Community Board because they've got project funding. So, I mean, probably the question is, a co once again, a copy of the financials is actually happy, helpful to get a good overview of how everything goes. Yeah, you know? no, there is no, no, what you've got from is what you've got. There is nothing else. Nothing else. Okay, no, just, um, okay, no, that's fine. Thanks for that. Councillor Payne. Well, I thank you, Your Worship, and, and thanks for coming along, guys. My question's just been asked virtually, but uh, my, and it was around the, the community of interest and how the levy was funded, but have you done any gauging of the community to see whether they happy, would be happy about this at all? I mean, you've had meet really? committee meetings or meetings with the wider community, or...? I don't see that we've actually got a great choice. I mean, like, part of the problem is we can go down to the start of the chicken levels, and you tend to find that we start... I'm being very involved with the Target Health also. You, you very quickly find that 95% plus of any money that's donated comes in about 2 or 3% of the population. And, and I mean, that was certainly the case of West Target Health. It'd be, not to say the other people aren't also donating, but they're donating on a far smaller scale because that is all that, that's in their budget to donate. So that's not so. You know, I just sort of feel we start going down that track again. We're going to do exactly the same two or three or four percent of the population again and asking for for, for what's going to have to be fairly significant. Yeah. Thank you, Ruben. For me, hands, it wouldn't be the... It's not the fundraising that would be of interest. You might have noted Project Bruce had canvassed their public and 99% knew they existed and 100% wanted them to continue. And to have that sort of... to, to Admittedly, it's only a snapshot, but it does quantify that you do have virtually unanimous support of your community, which best, you know, as we go considering manipulating the what is a rating, if we know that we've got the backing of the vast majority, it certainly assists us in our calculations. Any uh, further? As an example, so the population of West Otago, so that's what, 2,200 or something like that? A major threat for society production of the Otago will seat see anything up to 1,800 people. Yeah. So that actually means that we're drawing people into the facility, not only out of West Otago, obviously, out of our people, out of Gore, out of... So, I mean, it, 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 it's quite surprising. I mean, these tennis guys, you draw guys from all over us. Question, to, to, right? to give you a... Uh, we, we run a tennis competition. That's how I got involved in the community centre. We have 20 teams of three people, and um, after COVID-19 last year, I got on the phone and, and rang all the teams and said, in a couple of weeks, can we get going with our tennis? They said, can we start tomorrow, please? Um, so it, it's a community-run tennis event. We have four teams from Clydevale, teams from Napdale, teams coming this year from Balfa. It's The average age of the players will be closer to 50 than 40. It's um, mental health, getting out, having a yarn, and always finding someone else that's had a worse day than you. And uh, and the, the whole the whole hall runs like this. Each each little organisation um, looks after their part. We needed new lights. Um, it's 13 metres up to that roof. There's only me and the electrician who's ever been up there. And um, so this time we decided let's put LEDs so we don't have to go up there every four years. So the small stuff we can do. But it's that this roof is steering us. When you build new buildings, don't use architects. So we want to put a, uh, their stamp on a building because it's bound to fail. You know, it's... Well, the 30 year old roof should be fine. Yeah. And, and, and it's still it sounds fine, but... I think what you're telling us is a story we've heard many times before. You've got a magnificent facility and there is a cost to having a facility like that in your community. So we appreciate 
your input, and thanks for coming over to assist us too, guys. Appreciate yeah. it. I better check. There was no further questions, was there? This time. Appreciate it, guys, uh, and all the very best. Thank you very much. What I might do, team, it's normally a brow. It's a little bit. It's the same as Mr. Tiger Health, for example, which we consulted on. I think that the grant, the grain grant that everyone comes from the Mr. Tiger community are great. Um, so it's you would, you would increasing. To, you would have to. Fund like the years where we thought we could then do it for a new plan for us. Yeah. We'll work through the logistics of the options when we present it in the item. No, I'll just make it like myself. There's ways to do it if they want to go and do it. Yeah. You can't just go and do it. It's a great Excuse me, councillors. Um, unscripted, shall we say? Mr. Galloway has come. He's been impassioned on. Uh, you will, you'll see where is his presentation, Larissa? Um, yeah, you've got it. Can I say, Mr. Galloway has real difficulty in hearing. So, can yeah. anyone on their questioning be quite precise with uh, with where we're heading? <laughs> nice and loud, Mr. Galloway. The floor is yours. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, I can't hear very well, so I've missed much of the discussion. However, you've now caught up with my few notes about Milton makeover or Milton mistake. Um, I won't, you've got it all to read. It was prepared before the meeting in Milton, um, but I didn't get a chance to present it there because there was a lot of discussion and the meeting went on for a long time. Um, but uh, there the, was perhaps one point in yesterday's Otago Daily Times, in this I make reference to um, Mosquil and Gore and their various plantings in the, on the street side. And in the muscular one, the troughs of plants have been um, removed as from where I've seen, uh, and I don't know anything about gore really, but you hear that there's been a lot of damage to troughs of plants round uh, plant containers tipped over, and in the, yesterday's article, they, the Gore Council was saying, oh, well, it was just a trial. So I don't know if these trials in the Milton's main street of trials of trees uh, is just a trial or not, but that needn't be a trial. There's an example there now in the south pedestrian crossing in Milton. There's a tree about three to four metres high in the curbside uh, just outside the RSA, about where they cross from the RSA to the Presbyterian Church, and that tree looks decidedly sick. Its top half is all just dead sticks, and I don't think you need a trial to prove that trees won't do terribly well in the main street of Milton, and nor will the traffic. Um, however, this if you've read it, I'm available for questions. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Galloway. Questions and turn the volume up, guys. <laughs> Councillor Volwell followed by Finch. Uh, thanks very much, John, for coming along today. Um, I just wondered if you have a look at the main street of Belcluta recently. I, I, I went along the main street just a moment ago, about three blocks along, and I'm, I'm not a horticulturalist or an arborist or something, but I do wonder about those trees. They vary a lot. Some are de certainly deciduous and are losing their leaves naturally, but there's one across the street that's still green, and I do suspect that the concreting around the base of them will um, 
uh, cut off the, the growth. Uh, um, no, I, I certainly think they don't abstract vision as much as the ones in the, um, the, the page 12 of, of your example with a lot of shrubbery around the bottom. Um, but I, I don't know how long have I been there. So Six years. In Six years. Six years. Six years. Yes, I, I do wonder about them, and uh, you know, I don't, the one example in Milton isn't exactly good at all. Councillor Funch. Mr Galloway, welcome. Thank you for your submission. Would you be happy with the main street of Milton not having those trees right in the middle of the retail area? If they were moved further out, is what some of the retailers were asking and suggesting, would you be happy with that? Yes, I was thinking, like, I understood that your preference was for the first, uh, just the place around the um, Stewart Street as park or alternatively the other options are wider out, well it's perhaps safer if you do meet the trees and um, visual obstructions earlier where there's less, um, I, I think it could be harmful right in the middle of the town to suddenly come on a, into a forest of trees, um, but I don't know, you've got the school, if you put them further north, there's of course the school children, the school crossings, and, and I do think the shade uh, of the trees would obstruct vision. I, I know even now, the one that's photographed them, or, or drawn on page 12 is opposite the going across from the chemist shop and it's much easier to see pedestrians on the um, east side than in the shadow on the west. Um, you know, you've got to have a good view of people approaching the crossing. So apart from the trees, are you happy with the undergrounding of the power lines and everything else for Stuart Reserve? Well, I'm neutral about the elect electricity going underground. I thought that was, it was the trees that necessitated that. But, um, no. No, the trees don't necessitate the power going underground. The power is to have an upgrade and to improve the main street. That's OK. Thank you very much. Councillor Foster. Hi there. Um, just, um, so just with about the trees, would you be happier if it was low, lower, lower shrubbery or do you don't think we should have any greenery in that retail area? Well, the, the trouble with trees is they grow and they might start off just as low shrubs and ultimately um, they probably require pruning and so on. And, and you'll have perhaps seen that a, um, a, a North Otago um, man's wife was killed when a tree in the, somewhere in North Dunedin fell, the branches come up, came off. So the, the trees are, they are movable. But if they weren't trees and more just bushes? Well, the, the, the draw, the, uh, pictures on page 12 show a lot of shrubbery or a lot of plants around the base of them which um, as I say cyclists will have to go around them and um, not keen on that either yeah uh, that, that drawing is certainly different to what you've got in um, Mount Luther so Thank you, councillors. If there's no more questions, John, can I thank you for the enthusiasm and your highlighting of the issues and, and you've brought your concerns <coughs> and aired them and we appreciate that. So 
please uh, will certainly be, this is an ongoing procedure and we'd love to keep in contact with you, but safe travels, thank you. Right, back to our schedule, you'll see him, welcome Akua, Craig and Owen. Craig and Owen from Sport Otago, Sport Clutter Otago, let's get it right, eh Craig, we've got to get that front name first. And uh, page 311 in the big book, everyone. Oh, hold on, I can turn the volume down now, actually. 311. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, hey, look, uh, thanks so much uh, for having us and accommodating us and the guests. Uh, yeah. Welcome to Owen, who some of you will know. Uh, so Owen's my manager and the general manager at Sport Otago, thanks to the need. Pierre Kura, and uh, yeah, thanks for accommodating us. Uh, I'm not going to ramble on too much. Um, yeah, I was finished off at the end, basically, but I was at a rugby meeting on Monday night, and an interesting fact that came out from the gentleman from the Otago Rugby Football Union was that. Uh, 12 year olds are now spending 10,000 more hours uh, sitting down than what we did at that age. Uh, and then also coinciding with that, they are um, eating the uh, same amount of sugar at 12 years of age that their grandparents have, have consumed in their lifetime. So we don't quite, you know, with devices and, and how everything's evolving, we don't know the ramifications of that. We're not going to see them yet. I think in our district we're pretty lucky with how active our kids are, but I think it shows the uh, importance of this role and how important it is, um, you know, and we all know the benefits of being active, uh, the mental health, physical health, and just the uh, aurora and um, you know, spiritual well-being that it creates. So I just wanted to mention that. Uh, also, with the political district, um, travelling can be an issue for a lot of our schools, a lot of our sports teams. Uh, we have the Rural Travel Fund, uh, and I know for like Swiss to Targa, they often go to four uh, for competition uh, at primary and secondary school. Uh, Tamariki and Marantahi, uh, same here, uh, travelling to the Nathan. Um, and the Rural Travel Fund is massive in allowing those kids to participate. And I want to thank the council for topping it up. Uh, and also, I know this is a submission that's in there, uh, hoping for that top up to uh, continue. And the committee of the Rural Travel Fund, I can't. Uh, yeah, I can't thank you thus enough, and I can't endorse it to hopefully continue uh, yeah, uh, too much because it's, um, like I say, allows those children uh, to, to, to participate. So, so thank you for that, and I hope it continues. Um, I guess just finishing off the last year, I guess I spoke to you from the computer. So it's nice to see you, obviously, I see you lost anyway, but it's nice to see you in person. Uh, just obviously cover up quickly probably some new initiatives that Sport Police has got involved with in the last year, and I guess one was obviously the lockdown challenge, uh, which was great to have a bit of banter amongst the district and, and Rosebank, uh, unfortunately, uh, I should say this, but they won. Um, <laughs> so, um, no, it's good to um, good get the community involved, and um, so that was one positive from lockdown. Another one was just picking up the phone and being able to have that time to ring. I uh, made it a point to ring every school. <coughs> Sports Club and Recreation Athlete Organisation in the district, uh, just to get a really see how things were going during COVID uh, and really push out the uh, Community Resilience Fund, which we had a really high uptake of for clubs and organisations here, which was good. And it was just good to get a lay of the land and build some, build some new relationships. So that was great. Uh, there's been a few new initiatives here with lots of uh, having Pat Group come along, running sessions for them. They're now in a place where they can uh, run their own lunch, a bit of training. I know help them occasionally. Um, things like the Tony Trail Golf Program are now running there out of uh, Orwalker and Kaitangata and Cluth Valley and, uh, and Lawrence and um, initiated with the Rec Centre here a fund for disadvantaged children to attend their holiday program and that's still uh, going along nicely. And then it's just things like um, the last year Senior Touch um, being heavily involved with that, um, trying to give it some off and Establishing a new committee, trying to work on those numbers we have with the, with, with the primary schools, and that's um, yeah, that's a lot to So that's positive. And then we've got events coming into the region, like some of you may be aware of the Catlins Ultra uh, recently, which I was the, um, assisted with somewhat, and then bringing the back with the half marathon back last year, uh, which is now the Cross Recreation Centre uh, half marathon, and that's um, that's going to be great for the region. It's going to grow. Um, Athletics Otago contacted me last week. They want to be the Otago Championships uh, next year for half marathon. So, sorry, this year, October. Uh, so that's great. And then Sport Clue that brought the um, Otago Primary Triathlon teams to uh, our booth that we snuck it in last year. 
uh, and we just had it last month. So things like that are great. It's great for the children to have it on their doorstep, not having to travel. And it's also, I love, um, you know, going to town and, and hearing how busy town's been, or, you know, uh, there's so many people around. So, yeah, look, yeah, um, thanks. Thank you for your support as council, um, and thanks to those who of you who support me on steering groups and other committees, uh, volunteering and, and all sorts. So, um, yeah, hopefully you can continue to fund us and um, make that small uh, adjustment for inflation. We appreciate it, and um, I'll pass it on to you. Thank you. Craig. Yeah, just briefly from me, and really just to reiterate what Craig said, um, just on my last points, I really, really do thank the council for the support of the sport for the role. Um, it's not an understatement to say that we do rely on local funding for our regional roles, um, and we would struggle without it. So the contribution that council makes to the Craig's role, the sport for the roles, is much appreciated. Um, the other thing that I would like to just take this opportunity to say that one of my jobs at Sport Otago is to coordinate all of our reporting um, from across all of our staff. Um, and Craig's mentioned a few things there, but it really is just the icing on the cake. Um, he's, he's one of our top performers. Um, the amount of work that he does, um, I, I coordinate all the reports, and I see all the stuff that comes out of Sport Pluto. Um, it's, it's really significant um, when you stack it up against uh, some, of the other, some of the other work we do. So I just want to give you a plug, mate, for doing an awesome job. Cheers for that, team. Councillors, questions? Councillor Herbert. Thanks, thanks, guys, and great to see you again, Craig. Um, my question is probably more about what you touched on with the COVID, Craig, and just wondering how the participation levels of, have come back in, in the traditional sports, or is it a question of a lot of people have pushed the reset button and found something else to do and haven't got back into their traditional sport? Or is, have you seen shifts in numbers and participation around the it's, district? It's pretty hard to tell at the moment with winter sports just, just starting out. Um, but there's certainly more of a... Um, People like to turn up and do stuff. So, like to the Catlins, I'm sure you know, yeah. half marathons, so things that people can, they don't have to go to training twice a week. Um, they can just turn up, pay, and go. And that also affects volunteers and you know having people involved, referees as well. They don't have to worry about doing any of that. So, that's something that we're starting to see. I think we've seen that probably before COVID. But I think people have had a time. And also, you know, I know um, short seasons is something that, that's desirable. And I know with the competitions that I run, I try to keep them short. Uh, seven, eight weeks. I think um, I think are looking weekend. to be a bit more adaptable in terms mm -hmm. of their offerings. And I think it was an uncle who said that they about night rugby, um, the more night rugby that's been played in the regions, just to be a bit more adaptable. Um, as, as Craig said, early days for winter sport, but our overall, our secondary school uh, numbers in, in um, rugby are looking like we're going to have an increase in teams this year. So it's the early days, but the signs are pretty positive, I think. I think what that, that reset is, is just trying to be a little bit more adaptive with how we offer sport and recreation as a whole. Thank you. Yeah, also, just add on that, that the sport, the events that we've run, have, like Sport Week, the runs, we've definitely seen an increase. Well, that's good. Go, Councillor Kelly. Thanks, guys, for coming along. Um, just, just touch on your opening uh, statement, you know, about... Uh, Children sort of sitting around eating a bit more. Well, what sort of buy-in do you get um, from primary schools in the Clear District? Uh, amazing, uh, yeah, phenomenal. They, I know my counterpart in North Otago, I can speak about that. They don't have any buy-in from primary schools, so we run various, you know, run athletics, cross countries, school tournaments, rugby tournaments, so on here at the end of May. Uh, traditionally, we have about 90 teams. Uh, from the Perth district, so it's massive. And I know um, sports organisations come down from Dunedin and uh, <coughs> just can't fathom how we do it. Um, and I don't think it's anything that I'm doing. I think it's you know the schools that's having good teachers, having good principals, um, who are who are keen, and it just it just flows on. And what sort of parental involvement are you finding uh, so from a primary schools? Well, for those things, you know. For example, Rosebank might bring, I think, bring nine teams to the Rupert tournament, so that's nine uh, parents. It's also a teacher in charge of them all. So yeah, it's um, you know it's not getting any easier with parents getting involved because you know often they're both working or, or things like that. But um, the support that we have or that I have in the community for those things is, is massive. That's good. Thank you. Further questions, Tony? If not. Craig and Alan, thank you very much for the presentation. And thanks, Craig, oh, well, both of you. Thanks for the work that you do in the district. 
It's a wee bit worrying, those statistics. But if I got this fat in the old days, how fat will I get in the new days? <coughs> worrying. But cheers, team, appreciate it. <laughs> right, Nolene and Matt. Welcome, team. We've got the Cross Rec Centre at the Cross Rec Centre, and it's been really neat coming down here just to once again get the reminder of the vibrancy and what comes comes through the door all the time. So, welcome, team. The floor is yours. Yes, thank you. Um, I did actually want to officially welcome you all. I haven't had a chance since you've been coming here, but thank you for choosing to come here. Um, sometimes it's been like this, and you've had nice, quiet meetings, but I appreciate your patience with some noise coming from when the facility is full here. So thank you for that. Um, Matt's just wants to do a bit of... You've all met Matt before. Uh, he was new to our committee a couple of years ago, so we're lucky to have him on board. Yeah, so, um, yeah, thanks for having us, and thanks for, uh, for your support um, over the years. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's good to uh, get you guys on air too for a change. And, um, sort of show off the facility we've got here that, um, that we're running. Um, so we're asking for a, a slight uh, increase in line with inflation um, for the running uh, running costs of the, the facility. Um, it's uh, around a similar percentage uh, of our running costs, around 20%. Um, and I think that's that's not too bad. We um, we do pursue um, a lot of a lot of other uh, income streams. So the lots of the um, lots of boards you see up there, uh, which we're just renewing, um, and the users of course fund around uh, 50 or 60 percent uh, of the running costs. Um, so we yeah we're very thankful for, for what we've done. Um, uh, yeah, we, so um, for your money, um, yeah, of course you get the, the professionally run facility that you see before you. Um, we're aiming for um, a bounce back from COVID, of course, uh, and we're going forward, we're probably looking at around 90,000 people through the doors uh, per year, uh, supporting 200 community groups and 400 events. Um, and given, given the size of um, the area and um, the, the location in the country, um, the large floor space uh, gives it a huge indoor area for the community um, to use, which uh, especially over our eight month winter uh, definitely comes in handy. Um, and yeah, I'll hand you back to Nolan to uh, continue. Yeah, so I just kind of wanted to, um, to talk to you about the, the team that supports this facility. Um, the staff are really proud of what we present to the community day in and day out. And, and one of the things that we get when we have people coming that are new, are, they're always shocked that this facility is going to be 10 years old. They go, oh, it looks brand new. So we're really proud of being able to continue the legacy that Penny started when that's concerned. And we continue to build our relationships with our supporters, we have a, and our volunteers that we do a supporters evening to recognise their contribution and we really value both the volunteer hours and the financial support that they give us. Um, we also have a lot of volunteers that put many hours towards our school holiday programs, our sports days, we have gardeners, we have a general repairman and floor cleaning guy and the committee itself, so we have many, many hours of volunteers that go into making this place the one it is. Um, as I said, we're approaching our 10 year anniversary, so um, of course we've still got the costs increasing around supporting the building. But um, <coughs> we're also looking forward to celebrating that 10 year anniversary with the community, and we're going to do it in conjunction with the Rec Centre Half Marathon. So we're looking to utilise and, and show off the whole facility to a different group of communities as well. Um, yeah, so any questions? <coughs> questions, councillors. Councillor Cowie. Uh, oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, guys. Hey, I'm looking at your financials. So, TML Lounge Hire. This is us? This is us, the Tyra McLean. What's, what's the cost and the rate payer for us to be here today, please? Uh, we've done a deal. 
Ooh. council. Yeah, with a catch rate, so no matter how long you're here, it's $120. Per day? Per day. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we have a community and corporate rate. Yes. So, yeah, so we try and support the community groups that want to. <coughs> so, can I ask what it would normally be then? Uh, $46 an hour. And Thank then the corporate rate is 55 Okay, that's yeah. good. Thank you. Further questions, Tony? No, oh, oh, yep. Oh, who was that? John? Just, 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 can I just clarify, you say you wanted an increase, but your numbers are saying carrying on. Yes, yes, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. What, what is the number? The 53,500, same as the previous. Yes, sorry. Don't spook the finance man. Sorry. Okay, we know where we're heading. Councillor Ludeman. I'm just actually going to congratulate the Rec Centre on the um, great work that you're doing. I seem to be often picking up or dropping off children here, and it is an extremely busy place. Um, you've done a great job, and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thanks very much. Absolutely, and I love the breadth of it. You know, like this morning with the walking group that some of us will be imminently going to, I have no doubt, but it is. It's, it's not, I, I'd seen it at the start as it was going to be the netball and the rugby, but the breadth of sport and the activities that come in here and the standard that you keep it, uh, you know, it's, it's magnificent. So thank you. Thank you, team, and thank you for your presentation. Thanks very much. Kia ora. Right. Next one up, Trudy. Welcome, Trudy. So Trudy's Kaka Point Surf Life Saving on 163 in the big book. Welcome, Trudy. The floor is yours. Good morning. I feel slightly underheated after a It's usually Nora and Jackie who you would deal with, but she sent me to the community staff today. First of all, we'd like to thank you all for supporting the health points during the um, That's such a huge contribution that you make. You may not realise it, but we cannot have a control without you. So, um, to be supported. It's just huge, and to be able to link it to our local district um, support as well, um, well, I think it puts us above some of the other bigger parts that we can use. So, for starting, um, that's my first big thank you. Um, you may have seen we've slightly asked a little bit more um, than I think we previously had, and that's with wage increases, um, as you'll be all aware. That are slowly going up, so we need to keep up with that. But um, this is the only cost that we're asking for your support for is for our paid guards. Um, wages, the rest of our patrol is done completely by voluntary with a very small group of people, and um, that's where we're trying to struggle with. So we sometimes have to get paid guards from Dunedin to travel down uh, when we're really small. <coughs> And our patrol isn't just Car Point Surf Club, but if you see anything that's involved with search and rescue, that involves us as well, because we go well past Tauri and we go way, way out down to the captains. And um, yeah, anything happens, it's so really to remember to be using support for to go out with the search and rescue, and that's where they keep your boats and everything as well. So we're quite prepared, and um, our volunteers have quite a range of duties, which isesn't just beach patrol. And then we've got a lot of qualifications now, so yes, um, I'm going to try and answer some questions just if you have any, because I don't want to keep up your time, and I know you've got all the information in front of you. No, I want to see heaps of questions. No, they have to be relevant to the service <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> questions, councillors. Councillor Payne. Thank, thank you, Your Worship, and, and welcome, Trudy. Um, yeah, quite a CV you've put in front of us, I've got to say. It looks really good and, and well done to the team past my regards on that respect. Um, just, uh, you've got some money stashed away for building renovations. Have you got an ETA on when you're going to actually kick into that sort of um, so our, part? Our, yeah, our plan is next year, so it's going into next stages. Okay. So next year is the kick-off. It was slightly put back because we had to build a um, shed to specialise in the yep. search and rescue ID. So, but that's the big that's the job. Good luck. More uh, council, Cowie. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good to see you along here, Tree. You're doing a good job. You asked me because I didn't read the paper anywhere last year or anyone drowned at Kaka Point. Oh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, 
My question is, um, do they still run a nippers yes, program we do. there? Yes, we do. How, how many are involved in that? Uh, we have 30 nippers. Yeah. So we have quite a strong nipper group at this stage, with a lot of involvement from parents, which is what we need to be able to continue anymore. Good stuff. Yeah. No, well done. Cheers. Uh, what, one last question. Has Trout still got a job with you? Trout is still our coach, <laughs> who successfully coached our under-19 girls um, team here in so, yeah. Oh, good stuff. Yeah, can't get rid of him, Yeah, great guy. <laughs> <laughs> If there's no further questions, you handle the questions easily, can you? No problem. Thank you for that, and thank you for the ongoing, um, you know, it's, it's more than just volunteering. That's lives you're saving out there. We really appreciate it. So thank you and pass on to your team, won't you? Cheers. Thank you. Look at that for timing, guys. Smithy. Brandon, welcome to the floor. So Brandon's here with his... Emergency services hat on page 68. The floor's yours, Brendan. Thank you, and um, thank you for uh, letting me come along and speak to Emergency Service Trust Lee Young. Um, just, um, I'm actually employed as Emergency Manager in Otago, but I work as Emergency Manager Officer in the Food Advocate Council for Civil Defence for the UNU councillors that haven't actually met yet. Um, I'm here today as the Chairperson of the Food District Emergency Service Trust. The trust has been running for coming along 15 years. We meet every couple of months and we have reps from the Food District Police, St John's, Fire, Salvation Army, Food Health First, Silver and Farm, Victim Sport, Red Cross, Search and Rescue around the Kanoka and Waka, um, Red Cross, um, and the Food District Civil Defence. So the, the group's just a good way to um, get an update of what's happening in our new patch with all the emergency services and some of the big players like sort of, like, we've got a response group and all that. So um, we've got two main assets in the trust and firstly um, one of the assets is we've got 12 defibrillators out in the community that was funded over the years and each year we get um, funding which I'm not here for funding for that today but um, we did a three year contract at St John's and that includes those defibs that are out in the community where we found a need that didn't have them. Um, the training goes with them, the pads and the um, batteries are all funded through the trust. Um, great delight in telling everybody that in March, two months ago, uh, the FIBA bears was used in Tokawiti and we were told that if that wasn't there, the person wouldn't have made it. So we've saved the life. So it's a great, great result. Um, secondly, what I'm here about today is um, the second asset we own is the incident control point caravan. Um, you should all have a picture there, it's the big caravan, for those that haven't got it, it um, sits around the St John's building undercover. So this is the command centre that is fully equipped to um, attend any incidents in the further district, and it can be just a safe water point or a radio comms or somewhere dry for a um, the agencies to use. So any agency or anyone in the Clutha district, any emergency, that can be rolled out um, in that. In the last year it's been used at Search and Rescue in Awaka, a Search and Rescue for Clutha. The Clutha police have used it at a three car crash just out the road there the other day and it's been down at um, the bottom of Chaslin for the Search and Rescue um, exercise. It was of great value here in COVID. We had it set up when we were doing the um, COVID vaccine testing. Um, they use it for the laptops, all the data entry, and the Include Health First has also used it when they did the flu jabs to keep all their um, doing the data entry and all that. Um, so I'm here today to ask the council um, if we could consider to continue the annual grant of $1,500 in the long term plan. That money goes predominantly towards the insurance for the asset. It's valued at the moment in the short for about 90000 k with contents and, and the uh, caravan itself. Um, and there's a wee bit of contingent there for if we get a flat tire on that because we're not, um, not having any money apart from funding. So it's the same um, cost as last year and the year before. Um, we're just in the process out of interest of um, upgrading it internally and we're going elsewhere for funding. We've got quotes for about 12k to totally revamp the um, three-phase generator, the data, the TV screens, the wiring that we can plug into people's house, run telephones and all that. Um, done a whole lot of homework with um, the Red Cross, the 
Fiends and the um, St John's Command Unit, and a group of us have we've got quotes and help them down on that to rewire that. Apparently, so um, that'll be ongoing, and hopefully, it'll get used a little bit more in the community. So, um, short and sharp, but that's it for me. Any questions? Questions, team? You might have covered it, Brendan. No, no, no. Oh, hold on. Ah, yes, you were again. Thank you, Brendan. It's a marvellous, marvellous asset to our community. So you're saying a total revamp of 12k, what, and you've gone for funding for that. How many different bodies have you gone to so far for funding, and we, how long to yeah. go? Right, so it's, just, it's all up in, um, in the pipeline now, so we've, we've got the quotes from um, down this to rewire it, because they're the expert in the um, field. One of the guys has just come back from Antarctica and comms. Um, we haven't put that forward to anybody yet, but the Cleveland Licence Trust has been a major funding um, of that uh, originally when it was put up. So it's going to be rewired so that every agency can come in and plug their own hardware in, but there'll be the TV screens, the whiteboards, the plugs, everything. So it's going to future proof it for years to come. So, yeah, so yeah, it hasn't been approved, and we've just really only got the quote coming last week. So, so what yeah. timeline are you wanting this to be done? Uh, it's operational now, but it's just a wee bit outdated, out of date, and we, you know, with technologies coming along. way. So, um, if we get the funding, um, and we've got some angles with um, of people who are going to apply for that, pretty sure we might, you know, be quite successful. It'll, it can be done in three days for the work, and it's just got to be in the end of three days, and then it's ready to rock and roll. Yeah, thank you. Councillor Herbert. On a quick one. Nice to see you, Brendan. Just with regard to the caravan, can anybody tow it? Do you have to have a specific vehicle to tow it, or is it pretty? It, it's very heavy, and yes, there's a few of us have access to St John's building to activate. We've got a process if it needs tipped out by any of the agencies that's preferred the four wheel drive club or the search and rescue guys that are. Because there's quite a bit of setting up as well. There's a three phase generator goes with it. Um, we do lend it out to a couple of the sports. A target like the school days, but in the new setup, we're going to have isolation switches so all the radio networks and all the channels for all those agencies can be isolated. But yeah, there's a wee bit of setting it up, so it's there's a handful of people through search and rescue that would deploy it normally, but it can go anywhere in the Cleveland district because we won't get the one from the if there's a major event. Councillor Cowie, thank you, Mr. But mine's a quick one too. Who are your current trustees, please, Brendan? Um, we've got myself. Um, Ro uh, Rodney Ross from Awaka Search and Rescue, Jolene from um, Cleveland First, and Linda Moore. Cheers. So. Any further questions? <coughs> if not, thank you, Brendan. Thank you for your brilliant, brilliant unit. Well done. That brings that first round to a close. I think we're back at 1.45. Thank you, everyone. Well done. I'll take that from Sims. We don't want it to speak too soon, though. I want to build a whole lot of power. Just like last year. Kind of three sessions, though. The, the, Remember the afternoon, last year? The afternoon one is the big one. Here's your challenge. He speaks for a long time. Yes, it's his last session. It's the longest Remember last year, I think it was like a stop watch. It could have And stop. Marissa? Yeah, if I had it on my watch, I'd just